Today is going to be something a little bit different than what I've been doing in the past. Uh, today we will be doing a cut and buff job on a single stage paint job. Some of you might remember if you watched the videos where I uh, last spring and early summer I did a ton of body work and paint job on this truck behind me, 1970 C20. And I stopped right then. I never got back to it. I just got really busy with uh, all kinds of other projects, remodeling the house, all that, you know, so things got in the way. But I have not forgotten on it. I, forgot, I have not forgotten about it. And so today I'm gonna get back into it. I'm gonna start with doing a cut and buff on this. I'm not sure that I've ever done a cut and buff job on single stage paint. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. I'm gonna do it the same way that I would with uh, clear coat, two stage paint. And we'll see what happens. So let's have a look at the truck. You can, see, I'll show you uh, why it needs a cut and buff job and explain a little bit. And then we'll talk about some of the products I'm gonna be using and we'll get right into doing the work. So this is the paint job. This is called uh, Burnout Blue. Can't remember exactly where it was. I bought it, but I'll probably put the uh, put a link in the description to the company I got the paint from. Uh, I struggled with this. I'm not used to single stage paint, and it came out okay. Like right now, it's filthy. It's really dirty, so it's gonna look worse than it really is. But uh, my big struggle was I could not get the gun adjusted to get this stuff to lay down. The paint was super thick. And so even if I got it looking good, I have to put it on way heavier than I wanted to. And then you would turn around and look back and it would be running. And so it was a nightmare. So anyways, there's a lot of orange peel in this paint and there are a couple big runs as well. And we're gonna see if we can sand those out sand out the imperfections and give it a good buff job and see what happens. So some spots to notice that are really heavy orange peel. The front of this hood is like a lot of orange peel. Uh, some of it's not so bad, like the fender's not that bad. Uh, the door looks great in the reflection, but there actually is a lot of orange peel here. It's kind of hard to see in the camera. But when you look down at an angle, like, like, the camera's making everything look better than it is, to be honest. Uh, you can see a lot of orange peel here. Like, it is, it's pretty heavy. But this truck has never been driven since the paint job was done, even though the paint job's almost a year old. So it's, it's got dust on it, but it's not bad. Uh, up here is like a really bad run. So we're gonna see if we can sand that out. Uh, there's a couple other little runs here and there, one here. I know there's more, but we'll we'll see what happens when I go to sand those out. So let's talk about what I'm gonna be using. So, excuse my garage, it's a complete mess. I have all kinds of sandpaper here. I'll be starting with thousand grit and I'll be sanding it by hand with a block and uh, move up from there to 1500 I have some 1500 for a DA, and I also have, I think, some hand 1500, but I'll probably try to skip and go right to the uh, the DA for that. And then I've also got some 2000 grip by hand, which I don't always need. Sometimes I can skip from 1500 and go right to this 3000. This is a very expensive uh, 3000, like a diamond cut really good stuff uh, and then from there we will go and we'll use the ultra cut compound i will be using a wool pad today you can use foam i get better results when i use the wool then we're going to use a fine cut and so this is not all the series you're supposed to use but i have all kinds of stuff so this is what i'm going to try so just bear with me we have a fine cut cleaner this is a lighter cut than what you should go to from the 105. But I've done it and I've had good results. So we're gonna do that with a foam pad. And then for the final step, we will use the swirl remover with a finishing pad, foam pad. Bottle of water, some rags, I'm gonna need more than that. I've got this uh, 
rotary or not rotary. This is the, the dual action DA polisher. I'm gonna use that for polishing and is for uh, the sanding as well. So if I'm using a sand like the 3000 grit or 1500, I'll be using that. And then I have this rotary for the wool. This will only be used for the wool. First step is gonna be to clean the hood. I am going to do one side of the hood completely done and not the other side, but I'll clean both sides so that it's a fair you know, comparison. You're not seeing dust. And then I just wanna go through and see how good of a job did we do? Did, does it look better than it did? Does it look worse than it did? Can I still get the shine back? Because it's hard to see with it being dirty, but this paint job has amazing gloss, even with the orange peel, it's very glossy. So can I bring that luster back after I sand it? We'll find out. Uh, there's obviously some stuff in the paint that I won't be able to sand out, but I don't think there's a lot. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it down with that water, take some of those rags, wipe it down, and we'll see how it goes from there. I got the hood all just cleaned up, you know, I just wiped it down really quick. No big deal. And I'm getting ready to sand. And I want you to see the process. Let's see, I'm going to try to find a spot where you can really see what's going on because it's, it can be hard to show. But I think right here, you can really see the orange peel. So I want to show you just, you can see it here too. But I just want to show you uh, exactly what we're going to do here and how I go about doing this. So what I have here is actually a sand and sponge that has, it's actually got uh, paper glued to it, but we're not gonna use that. You can use any sort of sponge. You want it to be somewhat rigid, but you don't want it to be like rock hard. Uh, this offers me just enough flexibility. It's a big area, like for wet sanding, this would be considered a pretty big uh, block. And all I'm gonna do is keep everything really wet and I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding show you how this goes just wet the area I'm gonna sand this is 1000 grit you can see I'm kind of hitting it at an angle like I'm going in this direction here Automatically, this is a little bit different for me because it's single stage. So you're gonna have color. Normally, if this was a clear coat job, a two stage job, you'd be freaking out if you saw a color because that would mean that you went through the clear coat. That's not what's happening here because it's all one, one thing. So you're gonna see color, it's gonna be different. We'll see what happens here. Clean rag. Just gonna wipe this off. See, it's all blue. Like I said, this is very different. Now, as that dries, you'll be able to see everything that's not uh, flat. Like, like right here, you can see there's some uh, speckles in here. That means that I haven't sanded this completely flat. Where it's totally smooth, that means I've completely taken out any imperfections in here or orange peel. And so we're going to work right across this and try to make everything as close to this complete solid flatness as we can within reason. I'm not going to try to make it absolutely perfect. This truck was never intended to be completely perfect. But I... I can't do any job without doing a good job. I have to do the best I can within, within reason. So let's just continue on. It's okay to, to flex it a little bit. If you need to get in an area and sand further, but maybe you don't want to sand the area that you've already got really good. I'm making sure I keep everything really wet. Coming back and doing the upper half. 
Be very careful around edges. Edges will sand off quicker than anything else because paint doesn't sit on an edge the same way it does on a flat surface. It gets really thin because it just kind of rolls off that edge. So you don't really want to sand the edge if you can help it. You try and just make everything as smooth as you can. As you can see, this is looking really good. I got at least 90%, if not more, of the orange peel out of this flat surface. I'm not that worried about this lip, and I'm also not that worried about really close to this edge. I don't want to be on that edge much. I'm going to go ahead and sand the whole hood, well, half the hood, with 1,000 grit exactly like that. Take the whole thing down. I'm not going to show you all the video because it's going to be really boring. And when I get the whole hood sand to that level, we'll regroup and I'll show you what's going on from there. So what I'm trying to show here is that on a really big panel like a hood, I try to follow the same procedure I would everywhere. Uh, it's hard for you to see where I've sanded it down completely already, but I can see it as I'm going. I can kind of tell where there's still orange peel and I'm going one direction like this, all the way across. And then I come back and I do a cross cut. And you can really feel on the cross cut that the, the paper grabs a little bit better and it starts really bringing down that orange peel. Like I said before, on the, the thousand grit or whatever grit you pick for your first sandpaper, you want to get every imperfection out with that grit. You don't want to be trying to go up to a finer grit and then try to get imperfections out because it's just not going to work out or it's going to take a really long time. So really spend your time with your first grit, whether that be thousand or fifteen hundred or if you're uh, really brave, if you use like 800, spend the time and get everything just perfectly smooth with that grit. And then when you step up to the finer grits, everything is going to go really fast after that. It'll be easy. This is after sanding it with thousand grit. I just wiped everything down with a clean rag let everything dry up so I can really see what's going on here. And you can see, for one, I cheated. I've already buffed this whole thing, um, all different grits and the first buff. I didn't go anything beyond that, but I wanted to see how I was doing. We're not gonna look at that too close right now, but you can see how I stayed away from the, the edges where it's all still really shiny. Now that wasn't even a lot of effort to stay away. I just, you know, stopped as I got close. Some people will tape edges off so you can't hit them. I never have. I've always had pretty good control, but it's a good idea if you're worried about cutting through something to tape it off. But you can see like that's a pretty clean line of where I, I stopped. So I'm looking this over and right now I'm doing kind of my, my final thousand grit inspection. And I can see some areas, especially up in here, where I didn't sand quite enough. You can see, especially right here. Like up here doesn't bother me too much because it's close to an edge, but I would like to get that a little bit better. And especially this pocket right here. I want to sand that a little bit more. And you can still see, even in the camera, a little bit of an orange peel texture. Right here, there's a little bit of a dust or something I got in the paint. I'm not gonna try to get that to go away. And like I said, you can see just kind of like they, you know, just like it sounds, orange peel. Now that it's flat, it actually looks more like an orange peel. You can kind of get that feeling for it. As I move around, you can see some shiny spots. So those are spots that could get sanded a little bit further. I think for the most part, 
I'm gonna leave everything alone. But I am gonna come in, I'm gonna sand more, like right here. That orange peel is a little bit heavier than I would like. And this area right here, and especially this area right here, because a big section right here I just didn't get very well. So I'm gonna finish up with my 1000 grit on those areas, just get it that much better, and then we will actually move on to the next step. 1000 grit is done for that one side of the hood. See a distinct difference there? Uh, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. It's gonna probably be good enough. What I'm trying to show everybody here in videos like this is that even a hack like me in a dirty old garage like this can get professional-like results. Not claiming that this is gonna be the most perfect thing you ever saw, but if I'm gonna do this much work, I'm gonna try to do a pretty good job. I'm not gonna try to make it perfect because anybody who's done any sort of paint work like this knows that perfection is hard, like really, really hard. You will always see little things that you want to take a little bit further, or I could go on and on and on about why perfection is so hard to achieve. I'm trying to do good enough. Um, it's an old truck, and I can have a bunch of excuses why I'm not gonna make it perfect, but the biggest excuse is perfection is really hard. So now we are gonna move on to 1500 grit, and that is gonna be with a machine, a DA, a uh, electric one. It's like a polisher DA. I'm gonna be using a, just a cheap sandpaper that I picked up at like a swap meet. I think it's called uh, Keen is the brand. So that's the other thing I'm really trying to show is that you can do all this stuff with miscellaneous things. It doesn't have to be a perfect package. Uh, you don't have to buy a complete 3M kit or a complete Meguiar's kit. You don't have to get all their special pads. You can mix and match and you can kind of try out some lower cost alternatives and see how they work. Uh, I've had good experience with mixing and matching. I know there's always some internet trolls out there that say, oh, you didn't use the right compound or you should have used wool or you should have used foam or you should have done whatever. I don't worry about that too much. I, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and you can judge the results for yourself. So let's get started on that 1500 grit. I've got you pretty close and personal now with the 1000 grit job. You can see the cross hatch. There are definitely a lot of 1000 grit sand marks in there. You can see where I didn't get uh, too close up in here. I didn't want to really spend too much time in grooves. I'm just trying to get the most, most of it looking really, really good. Here's the sandpaper I'm going to be using. Here is the, uh, it's an inexpensive Harbor Freight Polisher DA. And I'm just going to keep everything nice and wet. So I have a cord here. You're not gonna be able to see it on camera, I don't think too well, but I'll usually, I run it over the back of my neck so it doesn't drag on here. Uh, normally you wanna make sure there's no dirt, no dust at all, if possible. That's not possible in my work environment. But one little piece of dirt on 1500 grit sandpaper can just go around and around and around and just create who knows what grit. That could be, you know, a 600 grit sand mark. You're just gonna keep rubbing in. So you wanna keep things as clean as you possibly can. And we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna go back and forth, and then I'll come back and forth this way, and I'll probably go back and forth again. So when I'm going across, I am basically cutting half of the pad. So I go across full and then I come back and I'm getting about half of my pad again and then half again. This is cutting pretty good. Now I'm gonna wet everything down again really good and I'm gonna go pack the other way. May not be necessary. This is just how I do things. And again, how I do things changes. Just 
follow along, see what you think when I'm done. So this section right here is done with 1500. I'm going to move on. I'm going to do the rest of it and then I'm going to dry it all off and I'll show you what we have left before we move on to a big step from 1500 right to 3000. 1500 grit is done. I am pretty happy with how it's coming out. I think it's coming out nice and flat. Like I said, there are imperfections. It's not perfect. But you can see just how much orange peel I actually left behind. We get close to the middle of the hood. That could be sanded out if you want to spend the time of being careful not to hit an edge. But you can see for the most part, it's really just kind of flattened out. And when you look over here, yeah, it's shiny, but it looks awful. It's uh, kind of sticky, gooey looking, not so great. So the next step is going to be 3000 grit. And I will be using a piece of 3000 grit. This is like a foam padded grit. This grit, this paper, I've already used on another vehicle. It's very expensive. I can't remember how much, but I want to say it's something like $10 for one piece of that. That's a 3M Trizac. I think it's a diamond cut. Uh, but yeah, it's expensive and it lasts a long time. If this was a vehicle I was doing to make money or getting paid to do, I would just use new stuff. But because it's my private vehicle, I'm not making any money on this. I'm going to use a used piece. If it doesn't cut really well, I have new stuff I can use. So one thing I'm looking at in the camera, I'm looking off to the side just as I'm looking at this is just how much orange peel there is over here. You can see I did hit this side a little bit. It's, might not be so obvious or apparent. All right, so let's get the, th the 3000 grit done. You'll see that this starts to shine again after the 3000 grit, because it, it polishes it so well. There should be no more scratches in this sandpaper wise that are less than 3000 grit. So let's get started. Now that is what I wanted to see. See how it's already shiny? You know, it's still flat compared to that, but it's got a nice shine to it. You look at an angle. It's nice and smooth. There is still orange peel in there, but it's like a, a large peel. It's not rough. So you can see how the lights are shining nice and, you know, mostly clean. Or if you come over here, they're pretty fuzzy and dirty. So we are ready for our heavy cut buffing compound. So let's get started with that. For this stage, we're gonna use this heavy cut. It's uh, the 105. It's part of a series, but you don't have to use the whole series like I was just explaining a little while ago. I like this, it does a great job. I honestly think that if you use the 3000, like I just did, you could probably skip this step, but this is gonna just make sure I get rid of anything that's like a 1500 scratch and above. Can't, oh yeah, so this says it will remove 1200 grits. So it's pretty safe that it will probably move 1500, but I don't trust that. The 3000 just is a reassurance that it's gonna come out really fantastic. You don't have to use water with this, but I do. I think it comes out just that much better. It's that much easier to work with if you do. I also wet the pad a little bit. This is the wool pad I'm gonna be using. Just give a little bit of moisture on there. It's already blue, because like I said, I cheated. I did that front section already. And I put, I put on more than they tell you to, I'll tell you that. So let's put a couple of good dollops on here. Wanna make sure we get good pad coverage. Like I said, I use a lot more than what they tell you to do. Probably a lot more than what some of you uh, professionals watching this would say to do. 
The one problem I have with a rotary machine like this is it can get messy. So it is gonna sling stuff. I start off by coming in like this and just, I try to work it in. Get that cord off my neck so I don't hit the truck. I try to work it in as much as I can like this. So it's less, less material to really sling around. This is a really slow starting machine. I'm gonna get this whole front half of the hood and you'll see as I go, ooh, I must have hit the camera. So you probably didn't even see what I was doing. Sorry about that. So I smeared it all around. Just try to get, get that compound everywhere. It's worked into the pad as well. It's all over the, the spot I'm gonna be working of the truck, of this hood. Now, I'm ready to get going. This thing is a slow start in rotary, so it's gonna take a while to spin up. I sometimes will like leave it, it's got a knob, I can adjust how fast it's gonna spin. I sometimes start kind of slow until I feel like I really kind of work that material in. And then as it starts to really buff up, I'll speed it up. Let's get started. Less talking, more working. I'm gonna turn it up a bit. At this point, I'm gonna start actually really buffing it. That's pretty good for the first stage. Now, one thing you'll hear from a lot of people is when it comes to buffing, they're gonna be afraid of burning the paint. I can tell you as long as you keep moving and you don't let it dry up too much and you don't push down hard, I've never burned a paint job. I've done quite a few paint jobs that I've buffed. Um, now that I said that, this will be the first one I ever do a burn on, but. I've never had a problem burning through the paint. Just keep moving. Don't work it like a sander, it's a buffer. So just go along. I'm gonna finish buffing all this out. I'm gonna clean it up and we're gonna see what we have. That's the heavy cut done. I didn't even wipe this down. This is just what happened when I got done. I did wipe the other side down just to make it clean for a good comparison. And I know it's still blotchy looking and hazy in, in spots, but you gotta understand that that is a heavy cut. That is not the finished product. That's not supposed to be done. That's just a heavy cut. So you can see though, it's a big difference. So those lights are like fuzzy. Don't really look all that good, sharp massive massive difference i know it's probably hard to pick up on this is looking really good so this is done with the first heavy cut versus hasn't been touched we're going to step right up to a fine cut cleaner 
I don't recommend skipping the medium cut, but I don't have any right now. I think my last one, the bottle got cracked or something and it's junk. This is what I have to work with. This is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be using this on a medium cut foam pad on the DA polisher. And we'll just see how it goes. Let's do that right now. Before we jump into the uh, fine cut, I'm skipping medium. I wanted to show you something. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can find some. But I did get some dirt on my, my uh, sanding or my, yeah, it was actually one of my sanding methods. Had a speck of dirt on it. It's hard to show up, but do you see that trace right there? It's like a line right there. It's really like little swirls, my DA. That's a speck of dirt. And it carried through throughout the paint job. It's hard to see on the camera. It's actually hard to see in person as well. But there is some of that here. And that's why I stress you can't be clean enough. I am breaking all the rules of cutting and buffing. I am doing this in a dirty environment. I'm not being overly particular on uh, how clean any of my stuff is. Just know that you can get stuff like that if you uh, are not really careful. You want no dirt, no dust, really clean environment. I'm not doing that. Right, let's get started with that, uh, that fine cut. Again, I like water. You don't have to use water with these products, but I like to. Get that pad nice and wet. Try to get the hood nice and wet. Also again, I use more uh, product than you're really supposed to use. I like to make sure that every, every bit of the pad has compound on it, not just like the middle or the edge or whatever. It's just how I do it. Do it the way you think's best. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rub it in. Nice thing about the DA, it will not sling nearly as much as the, uh, the rotary. The rotary only spins. And so when it spins, it flips stuff off. The uh, Polisher DA will kind of like vibrate and like make little figure eight patterns. So it doesn't, it doesn't make as much of a mess, but I still like to just work it right in. Let's get started. <laughs> Right, that was what should be a medium cut, but that was the uh, a fine cut. I haven't wiped anything off yet. I've got a pretty clean rag right here. And I want to start wiping it off and do that so you can see what happens. This will have a bit of a resistance. I've got a, like I said, it's a pretty clean towel here. Apologize at the... Uh, camera's moving around a lot but I wanted to let you really get in here and see what's going on 
And you know what? I don't even know what this is gonna look like because like I said, I skipped a step. We'll see how it does. We'll find out together. Could probably use a little bit of water on this to really get it to come off cleaner. But I think it's gonna come off. It's doing all right. So let's hit it with this brand new clean cloth. You know, if the cloth is grabbing, then there's still compound left there. Uh, you could totally wash it between compounds and make sure you get all the compound off. The reason that you want to get the compound off between different coats of compound is that you don't want to be moving on to a finer compound and you're really just rubbing in more of the compound before that because you didn't clean it off. In my case, I did not clean off the uh, heavy cut before me moving to the medium cut or the fine cut, but that's a good idea to do. You don't really want to be rubbing in different compounds. This has not been touched. This is almost done. Let's go ahead and do our our final uh, swirl remover and see where we end up with that. Swirl cut is done. I uh, saved you guys the pain of having to watch me go through it all again, but same steps. I put compound on this pad. I uh, went all across the hood several times in different directions. And now we are gonna clean it off and see what we're left with. This is the final final stage of the buff. And let's see how it went. We gotta clean all this residue off. Can already tell it's pretty nice. Sorry about the hood banging around, making noises. One thing I want to note is that if you have a run in single stage paint, it's probably going to stay. Like that's, I can't feel that. But because of the way the uh, metallic floated, it's there. It, the only way to really fix that would be to, to paint over it. So that's probably a, something you need to know about. I'm used to doing base coat, clear coat, two stage paint. You almost never get a run in the base coat. And so it's not a big deal. Um, Cause clear coat, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. Obviously there's no metallic in clear coat, so you can just sand off the run. It's not a big deal. So what do you think? Huh? So you can see the wrinkles in the plastic above reflecting down below. So it makes it look kind of funny. Over this way, look at this side. This is the side I have not touched. Let's just do a close-up scan. This has not been buffed, not been buffed, buffed. Mega, mega difference. It's so hard to get to come through in the camera. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you uh, learned something, gained a little bit of confidence, understood if a hack like me can make this side of the hood look like that, when it used to look like that, then there's potential for you to do something really great as well. Thanks for watching. The rest of the truck will be done soon. I'm not gonna do that in this video, uh, but when it's done, you'll see it. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thank you.